just get lonelier the longer you're in love than if you were alone. Memories turn into daydreams, become a taboo. Just too kind, and I was too young to know. That's all that really matters. I was a fool. Baby, we built this house on memories. Take my picture now, shake it till you see it. And when your fantasies become your legacy, promise me a place in your house of memories. What's up, guys? Tastos is here to bring you a very special day in esports. We are casting Brood War. Uh, yes. And, uh, I mean, this this is a big deal. This is the game that we grew up on. Yeah. How old is this game now? It came out 1998. in 1998. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, a long time ago. Been we have playing been, uh, ever since. <coughs> well, excuse me. Until we, StarCraft 2. But. We have been pushing to have this done in English for a while. So thank you so much for joining us. Yes, and thank you to Afrika TV yes, for, thank for you, taking Afrika a little TV. risk, putting us on air for some StarCraft 1. But we need you guys to go out and let people know. Okay, if, if 110,000 people can watch Smash Brothers Melee, we sure as shit can get some play people on here to watch Damn tonight. right, man. And on this weekend for the finals as well. Absolutely. So tell your friends to tune in. Uh, a lot of people in Korea have been telling us that there's no interest in Brood War outside of Korea. I think it's absolutely not true. 
If you like StarCraft 2, if you like games in general, Brood War is a fantastic game. We're going to tailor this cast so that if you don't know anything about Brood War, uh, you can still digest it. Yeah, so indeed. this is going to be educational as well. Yeah, yeah. We want to we want to kind of bring you guys in and show you what the differences are. You know, a lot of people know about StarCraft 2. Uh, in, the, in the West, at least, it's far more popular than StarCraft 1 ever was. So maybe we can, you know, draw some parallels and, and show you how that is the same and different and stuff like that. I can't believe we're doing this, man. It's this exciting. Is so we really weird. have been trying to get someone to let us cast. A lot, yeah, a lot of begging, English a lot of pleading, for a, while. Um, a lot of pouting. We finally got it. <laughs> Mr. J, please. Please, let us on camera. <laughs> so uh, we're here now. Now, it, obviously, this is the first English cast, but this is for a tournament that's already been going on for some time. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is already the round of four. In fact, yes. the second day, I believe Bisu is waiting in the finals, which is amazing. We can talk about him at another time. But we have a ZVZ tonight. Uh, which is going to be exciting. Like, I wish it was like a TVZ or something to really show you guys like the best yeah, matchup. We're going to be starting this off with a mirror matchup, um, <laughs> but we know ZVZ very well. We're very excited to teach you guys how it operates. It is um, a – how do I describe this? It's, it's a real tightrope walk of a matchup. It certainly it, it, it's, is. You know, it, it can come down to just, you know, one or two lings or one drone being taken out. Um, so the players are really restricted in, yeah. um, you know – how much uh, how much risk they can really take? And yeah, it's it's more cutthroat than StarCraft Two ZVZ. In StarCraft Two yeah. ZVZ, uh, you know the the Zerglings can be stopped by Banelings basically. Sure. But here you ha like you stop making drones at some point. And you make a lot of Zerglings, uh, and there's only like really three attack units that we're normally going to see, which is going to be the Zergling, the Mutalisk, and the Scourge. Yes, and that's going to be what decides this because there have been some attempts um, throughout the history of Brood War to incorporate these Hydra Rushes, but I don't think we're going to be yeah. seeing any of that here today. That's like, um, it's been tested, it's strong, but not as strong as Ling Muta is. Yeah, no, certainly not. Uh, the the micro of Mutalisks in StarCraft 1 is far different than what you see in StarCraft 2. It's actually very precise. In fact, pro gamers would spend easily 50% of their practice time, if they're a Zerg player, on Mutalisk micro alone, on use maps, settings yes. maps, practicing only the micro of Mutalisk. Just to put this in perspective, you could easily practice six plus hours a day as a Zerg and become and better and better did. and better to the point where you are a pro gamer. It, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, also, this is a matchup where we see the least amount of workers in anything from StarCraft yes. 1 to StarCraft 2. Uh, you've got a few drones. You're, you're never going to saturate your minerals, <laughs> essentially. No, certainly not. It's, it's super low econ. Games can be incredibly short and occasionally very long. Yeah, and uh, it takes a lot more to saturate minerals in StarCraft 1 than StarCraft yeah, 2. Yeah, that's true. And also, Zerg functions much differently. In StarCraft 2, it's all about getting full saturation on your bases. Not the case in StarCraft 1. You yeah, have and far less drones. Yeah, it, you, you can try to build up a strong economy in some matchups with Zerg, but in Zerg versus Zerg, uh, it, it, the action picks up so fast, you got to be very, very mm. careful. Um, Remember, this is uh, obviously the game's in 2D, so the units are microed on a grid, so movement does look a little bit different. There's a few extra tricks you can use to outmaneuver a player that is not available in uh, in StarCraft 2 because the pathing is so refined in StarCraft 2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they will always make a direct line, where in this you can actually, uh, through micro, juke and jive around yes. uh, an, an attacking unit. And that's and a very important it. thing for Zerg vs. Zerg specifically. The Scourge actually has a little bit of a movement bug in it yeah. that we might see uh, abused tonight, whereas Scourge is chasing a Mutalisk. And if you juke the right way, you can make the Scourge kind of stop midair yeah. to turn, yeah, exactly. which gains you time so that the Scourge isn't hitting the Muta. But uh, we'll get more into that uh, as we get into the games. And uh, I believe we're going to be bring, bringing our players out here now. I believe so. <coughs> We've never know. casted this. Or I guess the, we don't know what they're. Gonna I don't know do what the they have on that. Today, you can see right behind me, right there. Uh, he's going into the booth. So uh, we'll be getting this started shortly. Yeah. Our no two doubt. players are going to be zero and effort. Two guys with a lot of history. Yes, indeed. Uh, okay. So, oh, oh. Quiet, please.
Oh, man, I'm getting chills or toes. Oh, seriously tasteless. This is so exciting. Um, okay, so let's talk about the players just a little bit. Sure, Effort and uh, zero. Okay, so – and you might have heard some of this stuff before if you watch. I think we have probably a lot of people that like StarCraft II that are tuning in, and sometimes, especially when we've casted players like Jadong, Flash, Stork, Bisu, stuff like that, we've talked about this in the past. In, in StarCraft One, there were four players that were the best ever. Yes. Uh, when it was at its prime, for sure. And, of course, some of them switch over. StarCraft two. most of them are basically retired at this point. But Bisu, one of them, waiting in the finals. Yes. Uh, Bisu Greatest Stork, Protoss player of all time. With Stork, I would say. Yeah, uh, I'd I say think, Stork may be number two, but it is debatable. Yeah, it's, it's debatable. Huge innovators in the game. Yeah, Bisu, the number one innovator for Protoss. Uh, you know, two modern Protoss. But, uh, yeah, so Bisu and Stork, and then Flash and Jadong. So one Terran, one Zerg, and two Protoss were basically the top four of all time. The only Zerg during the 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 prime years of StarCraft One, you know, before StarCraft Two came out and kind of fractured the player base and kind of you know split the attention of, of pro gamers and whatnot, the only Zerg that was really getting close to Jadong was Effort. Yes, this was the number two Zerg. Uh, a lot of people consider him like maybe seventh-ish best player in the world at that time, but. Uh, a fantastic, amazing Zerg player. This guy did have a foray into StarCraft uh, StarCraft 2 for a little bit. And, and he was really good. Yeah, he was really good, um, but definitely a better player at Brood Wars. So um, his opponent, Zero, um, I think if, if you've been following StarCraft 1 from start to finish, you might know a little bit less about him, but he's a very solid player. He's had a lot of success in StarCraft 1, mm -hmm. um, especially over the past two years. Yeah, uh, Zero is a player that was really coming up uh, right before StarCraft II beta was launched. Uh, he, it was like basically the new Zergs on the block were Roro, who is actually a StarCraft II GSL champion at this That's point. That's right. Shine, who is now the GSL observer for StarCraft II, and Zero. Those were like three guys that were really, really rising up as Zerg players right when that, that kind of fracturing of the scene occurred. So, uh, just something to, to throw out there about Zero. I definitely, he was definitely one of my Zergs I was watching a lot yep. right before StarCraft II and, and really enjoyed his play. No matter who wins here, we're going to have a fantastic finals. Again, guys, tell your friends to tune in. I know a lot of people don't know that uh, there's Brood War being cast in English. A lot of people, I'm sure many of you even watching, have never seen a Brood War match in English. Yeah, um, that's that's definitely a possibility. So uh, <laughs> this is a game. It's we're gonna make this successful. You guys can learn. Um, also, um, if you want to play StarCraft One, um, you could. There's still active servers. You can still get yeah. on there. Uh, you can get on it. It's either ICCUP.com is one server. I think yeah. it's probably more friendly to uh, non-Koreans. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is uh, the Fish server. I've played on both as well as Artosis. Yeah. And uh, you've also just named. I think it's called the MCA Launcher. There's somewhere on like Team Liquid or yeah, something. It's, it's, this it can but be you a can little download bit complicated. It. The game's but, yeah. so old, it's basically abandonware at this point in time. So you can get it, install it right on, yeah. and play uh, play Brood War. Yeah, oh. and you, you don't necessarily have to go to one of those servers. Those players are going to be really, really That's good. That's true. You could go right on normal Battle.net as well. Yeah, and, and it's like uh, mechanically, StarCraft 1 is far, far more difficult than StarCraft this is, 2. Mechanically, this is the most difficult game ever made. Yes, it is. That, that and is and an by the way, that, that's fact. not up for debate, guys, yeah. in case like you, you can ask anybody who's played both of them, and they'll <laughs> say, okay, this one is definitely uh, more mechanically demanding. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Um, modern RTS games, like such as StarCraft 2, you can select as many units as you want, mm -hmm. okay? Now, uh, in the older RTS games, they would cap how many units you could select at once, forcing you to bind uh, groups of units to hotkeys. Uh, yeah. And that cap is at 12. Now, the beauty of this, a lot of people would say, um, you know, well, that's not good. It makes the game harder to play. But I think of it as a feature and not a bug, because what happens as the game goes on, the more of an army you have, the more uh, structures you're, you're binding to different keys, because you also can't select all your buildings yeah. at once, yeah. then the more uh, actions per minute you have to do. So as you get further along and more ahead, you're also penalized by having to juggle more tasks at once. And that has yes. an actually incredible invisible comeback mechanic. That is, that that is, is the, the comeback game. mechanic. Yeah, that's the really comeback well mechanic said. in Brood War. Where, yeah, it's... It, Brood War, and th that's why Legacy of the Void is that I've actually been writing an article on this while yeah. I was on my vacation. It's almost done, but that's why Legacy of the Void is so damn good is because that is kind of becoming a comeback mechanic in that as well, where it's like yeah. you're stretched too thin. And in StarCraft 1, you get stretched too thin, not necessarily in Zerg vs. Zerg. This is going to be a yeah, very this aggressive, very quick a little game. bit different from the other ones. Yeah. But um, the other ones, though, it's like you, you're going to get spread too thin and your opponent can come back 
because you're so far ahead is why they can come back because you can't handle everything that's going on. That's right. But really, uh, it, it, it's really a fascinating game. A lot of the what made StarCraft 1 so beautiful and so competitive was actually an accident. It was not even designed that way. Uh, this is the you know, the original professionalized eSport, by the way. Yes. Um, this is the first so, iteration of true professional eSports in StarCraft 1 in Korea. Yeah. All other eSports, they got to come and kiss the Brood World ring. <laughs> show their respect. That's a fact. That is a fact. To the boss eSport that is Star 1. Indeed. And, uh, I mean, it, it's... It's almost like unfathomable. I know that there are some videos online that I took for my old job when I first moved out here of these players moving. Like specifically, I probably have an effort and a zero video somewhere online, maybe on YouTube, the SC for all stuff. But uh, it, it's pretty crazy to see what these guys can do mechanically. It, it, it's pretty incredible. Uh, StarCraft 2, I think, focuses a little bit more on the strategic side of things. And I know people get hyped up about APM, but a lot of that APM can be redundant APM. Um, repetitive uh, clicks. This is going to be a little bit more. You're all over the place, multitasking. As an example, guys, yeah. when it, when a drone hatches, it doesn't automatically mine. You have to tell that it to mine. That is right. That is uh, right. You know, when, um, you have to constantly reset rally points. You can only have 12 zerglings in a control group, which means you're immediately filling up uh, your binding slots. You only have 10 binding slots yeah. in StarCraft 2. It goes one all the way up to nine and zero. And um, generally it, speaking, a zerg, uh, if you're maxed out, you basically can't. Bind all your units. Yeah, you have you to can't do it. You have you to figure out different techniques on yeah. how to attack. And Drag well, selecting. And I'll tell you, if you could bind them all, it wouldn't be fair. I think it's the Zerg army would be. Uh, it would be too strong. So this is a game. It's it's. Uh, how old is this game now? What is it? Seventeen years. Uh, Ninety-eight to now. That is. It's 2016. So. Eighteen years. This eighteen year? years. Eighteen years. In like been a few eighteen months. years. A few adjustments. Incredibly balanced. Jesus. Over half my life, I've been doing Starcraft. Yeah. We've we've always had. Uh, the top three races always consistently uh, duking it out at the highest level. So, yep. I mean, it's it really is just a beautiful thing. Um, it's kind of like the perfect game. Um, a lot on the line here. These guys are in the semifinals. They want to go up and face off against Bisu. A lot of people say Bisu is the best player. Uh, Would it be surprised? Yeah, <laughs> he's the best of the best right now in Brood War. Bisu, uh, if you haven't heard of him, was the Brood War player who never switched. This guy was right up there with a. Um, you know, Jadong and, you know, Flash and, uh, oh, he guy. was absolutely yeah. god tier. Uh, you know, he's, he revolutionized Protoss for Zerg specifically way beyond into something different no one else had even imagined. This and is the guy who really engineered fast expanding yeah. into tech like we never had seen before. And and we'll definitely talk a hell of a lot about that during the finals when he is going to be playing a PvZ, the matchup he's most looking for. If he, he, if he, he had played PvZ for. the way that uh, he did the Brood War, PvZ would look different in StarCraft 2. Think about that. That's probably true, yeah. All right, guys, this is game number one. The Van StarCraft League with Kate Stos is very excited to be here with you today. Tell people to get their asses in here and tune in. So we're going to learn some Brood War. Oh, God, oh, get chills, chills man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we are. We're I back. love it. All right. I So Zero is going to be the brown Zerg in the top left, and then Effort, the yellow Zerg in the bottom left. Do you have a pen? I do not. I, wanna, I was going to write that down, because I don't know if we're going to have the you same... You write it in my blood. Just <laughs> I, guess I, I don't want to end up swapping their names. We don't have the same graphics we normally sure. have here uh, in the GSL. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the changes between StarCraft 2 and StarCraft 1 sure. with Zerg. Sure. Uh, like we were talking about before, you don't get as many drones in StarCraft 1 as you did in StarCraft 2. Like, the saturation is a bit different. You're going to have... Drones spread out amongst more bases. Yes. And then specifically in ZVZ, uh, there's no Banelings to screw up Zerglings. Like, if yeah. Banelings didn't exist, ZVZ and StarCraft 2 would look completely different. But, like, in StarCraft 1, Zerglings are actually much more powerful yes. than in StarCraft 2. It's actually, like, a fearsome unit. So and, and people with good control can really abuse you. Yes. Um, another thing to, uh, to, to keep in mind here, um, these maps actually... Uh, I, I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this correctly. Ma map size and travel distance is at has a little bit of a different feel. StarCraft 1, occasionally things can travel a, a lot more quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases on the map, like the, the rate at which links can get down there. Um, 
By the way, they did both spot each other here. Yes. On and the left side. Something important to note, there's no queens in StarCraft 1. So the overlords well, will sit there, over there your is, base. There, you, you could make a okay, unit yes. called a queen, <laughs> but we, we don't normally see it. Yes. So. And it, it it is a layer tech flying spellcaster. So, yes. And it's not something that you basically really ever see. But anyways, the uh, this means the overlord will basically see what you're doing the entire time. Yeah, until you get... Um, until you get mutas out, yeah, uh, and that's one of the reasons why players are forced uh, into going um, for for muta. Because if you go for Hydra, then they can, you know, it, there's there's a ton of problems. We can explore that more as this goes on. Mm -hmm. um, already different build orders coming out here. Effort yeah. in the bottom left, the yellow player, um, he opened up. He was opened up with a quick pool, right? That was a quick pool and quick ass, yes. Yeah. And uh, over here in the upper left, it was um, it was zero. I believe he actually went for hatch first. Ah uh, yes, he did go for that very vast hatchery here, and this isn't very surprising. Effort uh, always has really been known for very, very good micro. And, yeah. And again, this is part of the reason why he was really kind of the second Zerg uh, for quite a while in StarCraft One to Jadong, because, like I was talking about before, Mutalisk uh, control is like the most important thing for Zerg. Yes. Like I'm not joking. Pros would spend half their practice time easily. Just on a use map settings map, practicing needless. I think it's, I think it's important to point out that there's stuff you can do with the units in StarCraft One that you can't really do in any other game, just because of the way they move on that grid, mm -hmm. on a two-dimensional grid. There's a lot of cool tricks you can do. Now we see the layer tech starting up here. Now as the overlords, because in this case they both spot each other, they both happen to scout in the right direction. Uh, they're watching each other right now to see is he making lings or is he making drones. They're watching also how much gas is being mined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to count every single ling coming out. You have to have enough lings that you can go ahead and hold on. You need to know if you need a sunken colony. Yes. Which is like a spine, but it doesn't move, and it has. it's, like, just tougher. Yeah, it's, it's, a, tougher it's a little bit building. beefier. Now, remember, if you're making lings, you're not making drones, so it's a mm -hmm. real balancing act. And so far, it does look like Zero is going to be the aggressor, aggressor excuse me, with the first initiation. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't think he's really going to be able to get too, too much done here. Effort looking completely fine. Has these zerglings here? Has oh, to be careful come here though. This angle, though. Oh, you got to be careful about now, that. Now, no, you, losing you, you lose just one ling. It's already it's already quite bad. He's going to wait for these other lings to come up here. Uh, Does because of the rate up. at which they attack, you can micro your lings back and forth. So if you're good at uh, melee fighting micro, yeah, uh, you can definitely get a little bit of a lead. Now we see the spires starting here for both sides. This is the phase of the game. It's always a race to the mutas. It's uh, mm -hmm. how do I get my mutas out? while surviving ling pressure, and it's a real balancing act. Yes, indeed, and and you have to decide if you want to make any Scourge, and if so, how many Scourge as well. Definitely a big part of this, and uh, a lot of people, I realize, I've said Scourge several times, you might not know what that is. It's oh, basically yeah, I'm like, sorry, we, we should be saying it's that. It's a flying suicidal unit. It costs way it's a, less it's, than a It's like a Baneling in the air, but it doesn't do splash, yeah. but it targets on one unit and can kill it. Yeah, and it does 110 damage. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Oh, look at this. Now, th I, I believe he's going to try to do a uh, Sunken Colony pressure I think he might try to run in here. I, I refuse to believe that this, a player this no. good would have a drone coming out across that be, the map. That would be very hard to to imagine. But let's see what he does with this drone now. He's bringing it down. Yep. Because that yeah. you can just outrange the, the 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 sunken colony. Yeah. This so is pretty he's cool. making it on his creep. Um, and this is really cool. Now link speed um, is done. Right now, remember uh, effort closer to mutas. But he's putting hmm. he's putting the pressure on now. You have to make is enough lings, though. If you die before those, the mutas take a while to kill off all those lings. So, definitely a that, consideration. That, that isn't. There's, there's not some weird bug in the game where that hits from some no. distance, right? Okay. I, I think. I don't think so. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> so, think so. Yeah. Anyways, he's going to go ahead in here with a lot of zerglings right now. Actually, going to peel right through this sunken colony, and that's pretty nice, man. He's taking out every single zergling. Hopefully, there's mutas about to pop okay, here. Okay. He's going to dive right into the main. He has to get as many drones as possible. Mutas are coming. Uh, and the mutas will have been. Oh, he taps out. That's it. GG. Yeah. Game one is over. Okay, so he was making mutalisks right there. Yeah. Uh, and it was just a little bit too slow. And this is this is part of the balancing act. Uh, in in Zerg versus Zerg is how many lings do you make to actually defend? Because you don't have something like the Bane Ling that can actually just be worth a whole lot. If your opponent makes way more lings than you, you are going to die to lings. That's actually pretty cool. We saw that uh, the Sunken Colony. Uh, it's kind of interesting. That was not going on when we were playing. No, it certainly that was not. not a that thing. is a new, new piece. And of I was Day Nine's brother, man. I would have seen that happening somewhere in our. You in were Day Nine's brother. What happened? <laughs> I still am. But uh, no, I mean I, we don't see that. So you can see the meta in this game even still shifting. Yeah. I really was not sure if that drone coming out there was actually a mistake. I thought, well, that would be unfortunate for a first cast. We see somebody. Um, Accidentally sent a drone across the map. By the way, that does happen in Brew War sometimes because 
you don't have separate rally points for workers and attacking units, which makes it a lot more task juggling intensive. Yes, yes, there are so many little things that you have to take care of in this game. But yeah, guys, uh, you notice that there weren't like a lot of drones there. It's very important to realize like how much gas both sides have. Yeah. For instance, if you get behind on that Mulus count, you might have to go ahead and go into Scourge and hope you get those those hits in there. But in this game, he didn't make enough Zerglings for that defense, so Yellow went ahead and just fell to the mass Zerglings coming in. And again, we don't, this is like a game made in 1998. We don't have something called the production tab. So you yeah. have to look at this and say, okay, it looks like the way his, his resources went and his lack of Zerglings, he had to be making Mutalisks there. Yeah. And, and, and that was what was clear. Also, we know that just from the amount of gas that was mined. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> we're starting to get for you guys the outline of what a ZVZ looks like. There's always an inevitable race towards Zamuda. And yes, there are occasionally other builds we see, but we don't need to get into that right now. For the core, the bones of ZVZ, mm -hmm. um, there's always a race to the Muta. But you can punish somebody who's being too greedy in that process. And in, in this case, that was a specific timing attack for exactly when the Mutas had started making, when the eggs were there. Um, and he was going to kill him before the eggs hatch. Yeah. yeah, and that's how precise things can actually get in StarCraft 1 as well. Um, not to say that's necessarily more precise than some of the timing attacks we've seen evolve in StarCraft 2, but this game hasn't been patched since, I believe it's 2001? Uh, it I might have been so. year 2000, even. Um, I think it was 2001. The last balance patch was either 2000 what or 2001. What was in the last balance patch? Was that uh, the one where they it changed was, the, the cost of the spawning pool? It fixed, yeah, the spawning pool costs. Uh, it fixed Goliaths a little bit, if I recall correctly. Um, I, that's so. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, it changed Psy Storm slightly, I believe, so that lurkers could actually get out of it. Oh yeah, I think yeah, it made it, the it animation the damage last longer or something. And I then, think it was down the damage slightly could, on Psy could, Storm. Yeah, exactly. I think because initially it would trying to remember would back kill off a lurker years. in one storm or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I believe so that's what it was. And so now it takes two storms. Or, or, or it brings it down to like one or two Or if you want to know some cool stuff, it's one storm and then one zealot hit. Yes. So they would have a zealot run out there while it's storming the lurker and just take him out. Indeed. Um, and then lose your observer, as I saw Tasis do many, many times. I always <laughs> lost that observer, man. I was, I needed better observers in that game if I had to patch Indeed. one thing. Um, so it's it's 1-0 right now yep. um, in the CVZ. Uh, we will probably not see that strat used again here. I don't think you would use that twice in a best of five unless no. there was... Because I don't even think that was specific to that map. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, the meta has changed a little bit since we were heavily into Brood War, of course. It's been many, many years, and yes. the game never uh, completely went away. So, looks like I think we're going to a quick commercial break, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Tell your friends to join us here at Afrika TV.
Is back. I love it. I lo I'm so happy to be here casting this with you, Tasteless. Yeah, like, this is. I gotta say, this is like a little bit weird. It's kind of like a. I'm almost tearing up because I'm just like, wow. This is like hey, it's like overwhelming to me. that we get to do this. Yeah, we we were struggled in Korea for so long to eventually get a StarCraft show, and uh, that obviously hit off with StarCraft too. But we grew up on this game, so yeah. No, I it's mean, kind of funny. Now I'm sitting here with you, and we are. We are casting this. It's it's awesome. I am, I am a little bit overwhelmed. I'm so excited to be doing the finals. I know we're doing this, and I'm excited about this. And I'm having a good time I'm trying to intro some people to StarCraft One. This is, guys, this is where RTS truly was invented. Like, yeah, there was older RTS games and stuff, but you know what? They sucked. And you had fun playing them. I did too. But they, they were not actually esports. And this is the original, the OG. This is still this is the original such a legit game to have uh, teams, to have you know tournaments that were regular. Um, best game, man. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so, and again, if you're somebody who likes StarCraft 2, you can definitely appreciate this. Uh, it does it does translate fairly well, at least as far as understanding goes. Mechanically, it, it does have a different feel to it. Certainly, it does. And uh, but no, it's it's a great game. This is what StarCraft 2 is based off of. And I know you guys love StarCraft 2, and you absolutely can love both games. Yeah, you got to love both, man. They're it, both great people games. who think you can only love one game are the same people who think like. A lot of people are like that, right? We always make fun of those people, yeah. but like, it's it's like the people that are like, well, I could only love one child. It's like, no, as soon as you have another child, you just find out that you There's have more no love. There's no limit to the amount of love that yeah. one can have. You can love many people, many games, yeah. many different things. So love both of these games, guys. Yes. We're going to go into game number two on a map. I'm not in, uh, I don't know if you're Gladiator. familiar with Gladiator, nah, but I don't remember. this must be one of the newer ones. Could be. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be too impactful in a ZVZ. Yeah, maybe not. To see, um, but yeah, 
So uh, let's find out what the... Okay, so that's zero. Yeah, I think they're probably... White Zerg. Yeah. Got All some right. support here in the studio. And in the upper right, uh, this would be effort. Indeed. Well. Can't zoom in on that. <laughs> StarCraft 1. No, there's no yeah, zooming there's in. There's no zooming they're, in. You can never see how much money they have. There's supplies. <laughs> yeah. You cannot see production tabs, units lost. There's no charts or graphs at the end. Uh, we had third-party programs, which would rip a lot of information out of the replay to be able to yes. look at that. Like, Brood War chart uh, was this amazing thing. In fact, uh, the guy who invented APM back in 2002-ish, yeah. uh, you know, that uh, wonderful times, JCA, a, a Frenchman, if I recall correctly, it's helped us to analyze a lot of, of StarCraft 1. Speaking of analysis, something interesting is already going on here. Now, there's a, a, a bit of a, I don't know if you want to call it RNG here, but you have mm -hmm. two options on where you scout on, on a four-player map, right? Uh, you never scout the diagonal position. That makes absolutely no sense. But yeah. you, in the, for these players, they could either scout to the right or to the bottom, left or to the bottom, depending on who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, this means that effort is going to find zero first, and this is going to be a bit of a problem here for zero. Remember, there's no queen early on uh, in this that can act as an ant, uh, an anti-air unit. Yes. So these overlord gets in there. There's not a lot you can do now. There are really brilliant plays where you can disguise what you're doing, which we'll get into if they actually start to do that. Yeah. But that's going to be a little bit tricky, and we're going to see these two overlords, and you can see the second overlord they sent out, they sent in the opposite direction. Um, overlords, by the way, if Mutas come into uh, the game, I think we'll probably focus more on that if we get to that point. But uh, the role of overlords on the map really start to change, yeah. uh, depending on who, who gets tempo with the, uh, the Muta tech. It's truly a big deal. Right. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much. There, the game is so old, guys, and it was played at such a high level for so long, and in fact, it's still played at quite a high level. Uh, but, yep. like, it, it was, I mean, the, the pro teams that we had in StarCraft 1 were much bigger than the pro teams in StarCraft 2, and there were a lot of them. So, uh, like, the amount of little intricacies that there are in everything is astounding, and who knows, if we end up getting to cast a hell of a lot of Brood War for you, we can tell you all about them, but... Uh, please, please give Afrika TV some love and support. Yeah, for, and tell for them that you'd like to see more of this, man. This is think of this uh, day and then the finals day as a pilot, where uh, if we get enough support, enough attention, and enough interest, we might be able to make this more of a regular thing. Yeah. Um, now, right now for Zero, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, he's going to be pretty uncomfortable here. He is. He's been scouted. He has not scouted his opponent. Uh, he knows where he is just based off where the Overlord came from. But he doesn't know if there's a second hatchery. In this case, we're seeing a really aggressive tech build. I'm not sure if he's picking this build because of the Overlord Scout. I need to get Day9 on my speed dial and figure <laughs> that out because uh, he was a Zerg player in Brood War. Uh, I played Protoss, Dan played Terran. But notice he's keeping the Lings out far enough that the poke here by Zero mm. can't identify if there's a second hatch. When in fact, yeah. we're having this rapid rush towards Lair. Yeah, that is very, very fast indeed. And uh, that Spire is going to be going so down. So it's, it's called One Hatch Muta. Mm -hmm. And the danger right now for Zero is he doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, and and the thing is, like, the, the Oh, Muta my God, he actually, oh. he actually got in the way of the Lings. The Lings oh, can't man. get back home. He's splitting them out now. Now, you see this. Uh, 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 oh, man, is he going to be able to get back in Look there? Look at this. He's denying he actually, all scouts still. He actually still. zoned him out. He's denying but all scouts still. he's got to be careful. He might get sandwiched here if he mm. overextends. Well, he and actually so, catches some of Zero's Lings on the way back, which is very nice. He's utilizing these Lings pretty well so far, but he's got to be careful. Okay. Because this is two hatch against one hatch, so if he has to continually make Lings off of one hatch against two hatch circling yeah. while trying to go up to Muta, that, that won't necessarily turn out well. I got a lot to say here. Take a look at this. Now, he realizes he lost the Ling fight, but he does not back up because he's on one hatch. Yep. He, he has to keep the aggression going. So right now, he's forced there in a position where it's, it's a game of cat and mouse. He's going to keep running these lings around. Remember, he's going back to his base to, to put his drones back on or, or anything else he's doing the entire time. So he's got to split mm -hmm. his screens um, uh, properly. Uh, and already, Azero's identified this. So Zero now spills oh, forward, man. and he's going to try to uh, choke him out, basically, before. And that's why you have the second wave of lings. Now, back at home, that's... he should have a very well-positioned sunken colony. Yeah. Now, now, it, Position's very important here um, because of the way that... Well, hold on a second. We're going so yeah, fast. He has to back up here right now. Uh, now. The way that Sunken Colony is positioned, it covers everything. Mm -hmm. And he can just barely hold this off while the tech is coming up. Do we have a Spire for Zero? I don't see no, one No, no, no. He hasn't made a Spire yet. But uh, so, so the placement of the Spire yeah, look and, at the, and the way the, where the drones are, it makes it very difficult. And um, the AI is a little bit 
rougher on you. It does. It doesn't automatically target down drones. Yep. Uh, it always targets down attacking units over drones. So you can use the drones here and have them block. Now see this? Yeah, he, he can do a lot target. of glitching indeed. Yeah, he can actually glitch that. And so, tough choice there by Effort. Effort immediately makes uh, a beeline towards his opponent's base. He's going to be losing drones here, but he's hoping he can make up for that by getting back. And as you can see, ZDZ very low on worker count. There's, yeah. there's a rush towards sport uh, colonies, uh, which are uh, like spore crawlers. Yeah, uh, Starcraft yeah. too. They, they don't have that huge uh, bonus, but they have a lot of hit points and they shoot really quickly. So definitely they're good against mutas, but right now, I mean, I like this for effort. He's going to be able to kill off a lot of drones and the micro mutalists. Watch this, guys. You can turn on a dime with mutas. It is insane the type of micro that you can actually pull off here. And this mutalisk advantage is something that he's probably going to oh, have man. for the rest of the game. Yeah, he, he made the spore crawler so, or, spy, or spore colony, excuse me, so fast. Uh, he wasn't able to cover the, the pool, the spawning pool, but it's not clear if Effort actually wants to get that. So both players in a weird spot. Uh, Effort cannot expand comfortably. Um, and uh, Dude, look it, at this. It, it, he, picking off Overlords, yeah, he's going to get great. this Spore before it comes up. He can get the Evolution Chamber. I mean, this is this is looking pretty cool for Effort right now. He's re-droning in the meantime back home. He doesn't have to make any Zerglings because right. he has double spine, so yep. Zerglings are going to do zero against him. So, I mean, even though he lost a bunch of drones early on, these mutas are really being worth their weight in gold. Um, now, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he didn't actually stick on the, um, the, the, the spawning pool. I'm not sure what the timing of that would have been, but I think that probably would have been a better structure to get, but it, it's a pretty tough call. He went for the Evo Chamber, um, possibly because he wanted to cut off uh, more Lings leaving his base. He does have to eventually get a second base. Mm. Remember, it's one hatch against two, so there's double the production potential right now. Um, for zero, but zero yeah. is, is on the defense. And now we do have lings that have just popped out for effort. He's coming across the map, and we don't actually have lings that were made for zero. So even this small amount of lings, lings are much more strong in StarCraft 1. So if he can come over with his mutas, pick off some lings of zero, and get his own lings in there, he can just wreck the spores. Oh, look at this. He actually runs by. Oh. He's breached him. Oh, beautiful move right here. And this is great because he can get these lings over here uh, and start killing off drones, and the mutas can actually kill the other lings as they come in here and try to reinforce. Oh, this is such a big deal. Look at that. The spine, or rather the sunken colony, <laughs> going in the other direction now, uh, is actually going to be taken out immediately here. He's picking off this gas. This is a really tough spot for Zero. Yeah, this that is really difficult. And look at that. Even the glaives allowing these drones to be hit. He's eventually going to lose that top drone there. Yeah, you're right. Um, now he's got a he's got a really good foothold here. He's just got to keep this working. Uh, Zero though can still recover from this. It is a possibility, but it is looking pretty rough right now. Oh my he doesn't God, have he got the more tech. He doesn't there. have the gas. Like this is such a nice position. He's just picking off all the periphery buildings. I think there's a timing window in here where he can run in with all. If he gets enough zerglings, he can uh, dive in onto the main. Uh, if he loses that main, he will lose the game because he'll lose uh, mm. the layer, obviously. Uh, second hatch here. Now note the conservative move here by Effort. He doesn't make a second hatch um, at, at an expansion, which you can do because remember, it, it, production rates uh, operates kind of differently here. Mm. Since you don't have queens, you just have to have hatches. You can have the three larvae sitting outside the hatch. Um, so he's got enough drones there, and this is another great angle here um, with these mutas. Look at that range. Oh, he's going <laughs> to pull that back. Okay, uh, on diagonals, uh, range looks different on diagonals in StarCraft 1, by the way, guys. Yeah, yeah. Little fun thing for you right there. But uh, I'm surprised he's not hitting that with the links as well. There's no. Okay, there we go. There's going to say there's no second colony there. I think he's just being hyper conservative with these links. He wants to oh, make sure dude. he's not looking to not just let them die. He Ch needs to keep them alive. Check it out. There's actually a wave of links headed towards uh, Effort Space. We haven't gotten it uh, on the mini map. So there's going to be a counter attack here. A lot of tactics going down right now. Yeah. It, it's pretty neck and neck. Remember, Zero does have the expansion. If he can stabilize in this game, he's mm. going to have a much better income. And uh, this is a lot of spores for a uh, ZVZ. Indeed. I think we have five spores right now. Well, I think that you're right. He needs to be able to do damage with those lings in a counterattack. Like, if he can kill off all the drones yeah. and get it into a situation where effort isn't mining, he'll eventually win with these weird turtled up bases. Remember, uh, remember the, the lings are not as slippery as they are in StarCraft 2. No, certainly uh, not. So you can actually block... Uh, them off if you just control them correctly. Mm -hmm. A little bit like it's a, um, a American football game or something. Yeah, and, and there's no speed upgrade on creep whatsoever. It's the same speed everywhere. So. Yeah, good point. I almost forgot to mention that. But yeah, right now, uh, you know, we did see Effort grab a second hatchery, so he has as many larvae to work with as Zero, and now he's going ahead and expanding, realizing that that's going to be a, an important next part of this game if he wants to finish Zero off for good. And, uh, does not manage to get that Ling. That Ling will be able to count the drones. That's very important in Zerg vs. Zerg because, uh, like we were saying earlier, 
this is the matchup with the lowest uh, a degree of, of economic yes. play. I'm like trying to sound really articulate, but it's not coming out right. Yeah. Least workers. Least the amount of workers <laughs> in the game. So if you go in there and you're like, oh man, I have three more drones, that's a big deal. Yes. Now, I, I think Everett so far has played a little bit better in this series. He's kind of managed to get his uh, second base up. Most importantly, that's going to be an extra gas geyser, which is going to allow him to catch up in Muta. Zero is in a big problem, or has a bad uh, situation on his hands because he started his Muta tech so late. Yeah, yeah, and uh, to catch up with those Mutas, with that Mutaless count, is going to be <laughs> nearly impossible. Like, it's it's so tough. There's so many Mutas out, and with that next space coming up for effort, uh, it's, it's a really difficult situation. But I want to also point out, notice how he's really microing hard to try to do things like kill off a few lanes here and there. Yep. <laughs> Matters a lot more in this type of situation. You have less larva to work with, and as I said before, the Zerglings are just a more powerful unit. So anything you can pick yeah, off is going to be very worthwhile. Good. This is a smart play here by Zero. Realizing the Mutas are inside of his base, he's going to try to do a, a kill on the hatch here. Does look like, though, Effort with enough blings is going to drive him out and actually not even going back to defend. Yeah, he's actually just going maybe for the kill at this point, sending his links across the map. He knows Zero has to follow. If Zero wants to commit to try to kill that hatchery in in a Effort's Natural, then he'll just kill him here. So here we go. The oh, Ling's actually going to do a right by? in. Yeah, I didn't expect like this. Now remember, the Mutas can cut off circulation between the two bases. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what he's doing here. Realizing that there's not enough defense in this location, the Mutas now going to gun down the Ling's as they come up. Yeah, look at that. The Ling's come out as well. Ling plus Muta against just Ling is going to easily go to effort. And he has really done great great job of maneuvering his army right through here, putting Zero into a terrible situation. Uh, and I think if he can just get that last spore, it's going to be bad. By the way, you notice how the mutas are clumped up together, guys? I almost forgot to mention this. They're not supposed to be able to clump up that well. What you do is you put one Overlord in the control group mm -hmm. with the mutas on the other side of the map and have that micro, and that causes the pathing to bunch up like that. However, the difficulty is you have an Overlord that's constantly moving across the map yeah. that's vulnerable. So, got to be very careful in, in regards very, to that as well. In very intense games, we would sometimes see that uh, mess up. But right now, we have a lot of links coming in for effort. He's just trying to break through the front here. Very few Zerglings left. This should be the killing move. Yeah, I think this is going to do it. I, it, it was uh, He took out enough Zerglings in this process that ultimately, this base is exposed. You can see he's trying to get him to chase the drones for a little bit. If these spores go down, uh, the expansion will most certainly go down as well. And that's going to be a GG. Game All number right. two, uh, locked up here by Effort, tying our best of five at 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and uh, I, I do want to kind of stress what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, Effort was quite ahead after those Mutas actually ended up getting quite a few drones. He held off the Zirkling attack, but Zero still had a chance. He absolutely did. If, if he could have ever broken in and actually uh, gotten some, some massive drone kills with those Zerglings, which you definitely can do, then that would have been a, a really big deal for him with two bases up. But anyways, here we are. It's tied up at one and one. And um, I got to say, these guys both playing very well. Uh, some of that, uh, you know, Zero was in a tough spot because uh, he just happened to scout in the location where Effort didn't spawn. Um, but Effort did a really good job. That was a great example of one hatch Muta, uh, Link Muta tech defeating uh, a, a two-base Zerg. Yeah. Uh, very, very well done. And uh, an exciting game, indeed. It shows you, like, ZBZ is so different in StarCraft 1 very and different. StarCraft 2. Yeah. It's actually much more on a knife's edge than even StarCraft 2 is. Uh, to... I think it's the most unforgiving matchup that there is. Yeah, I think you're right. I, uh, I mean, it's, it's really... It's... Between the two games, I think you're right. It's probably just yeah. the most unforgiving matchup that there is. But a uh, really good job there by Effort. Uh, even though overall, strategically, the play was uh, really sound, it was a lot of very small victories that he had. Mm -hmm. I love that when he realized he was losing the Ling fight uh, at the second base, he doesn't go back, right? Because then Zero just chases him all the way back to his base and kills everything. So he runs by, um, and because of the path in Brood War, you can, you can outmaneuver somebody for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, since the, the units don't exactly make a beeline. Like, if, if they're coming like this and you go like that, they, they have to turn yeah. a bit yeah. more. So he keeps those lings alive inside uh, of the main base there of Zero, 
trying to get drones. Meanwhile, the Muta Tech is going um, uncontested. And he had to buy that time as well. Yeah. If he hadn't bought that time, then that's a situation where, as you said, the links follow him back and just kill absolutely everything right there. So really, really solid micro there. And guys, it's really hard to manage your drones uh, and you know send your overlords where you need them, micro those zerglings yeah. like that as well. It's like it's taken a lot of speed out of these guys to do these it, moves. It was also a smart play there. He didn't focus on overlords as much with his mutas. Because mm. that's another problem. When they get the Muta Tech up first, and they can start killing off Overlords and Supply Block you. But yeah. he, he identified that he could get in there and actually cut the two bases in yes, half. Yes. If you notice, he was flying the Mutas in between then. Then drones can't rally. Even if he makes Lings out of the main, he can shoot them down. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Great great play overall, though. Yeah, he killed the Spawning Pool two, three times. Killed the Evolution Chamber. It was, it was really good usage of those Mutas. But it looks like we're going to go to a quick commercial break, guys. So spread the word that Tastosis is casting at Afrika TV some StarCraft 1. I 
내 목숨 아이오이 인정하긴 싫지만 니놈은 준비가 됐다 시간에 